Okay, Sega Sonic fan here, just making a quick video on some TLC that I gave my Fluke Multimeter. This was a long time coming, and I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but for some reason I am. Uh, this multimeter, so this is my newest one. I got this maybe a year or two ago, and this is the 116 Fluke. It's quite nice. I really like it. Uh, it doesn't have the amp feature. Uh, you can only uh, do uh, micro amps, actually. So you really can't do, uh, it's not good for current testing. Uh, it does have capacitance, though, and temperature, which is the two settings I got it for, mainly. Uh, this is the capacitance mode, that's the temperature mode. I also like that the capacitance mode is not on the like secondary, feature, uh, secondary function. It's actually a primary function, as it should be. Capacit capacitor testing is very uh, common. Uh, also, it's got a backlight which is very nice. But the downsides are it's actually made in China. Um, unlike the older ones, uh, it's it's a lot uh, cheaper and it feels cheaper. Uh, it's not a huge step down, mind you, but something about it, something about it just doesn't have the same build quality and feel of the, the older models. So I got this one at least 15 years ago, if you can believe it. This poor bastard has been thrown in my so many tool bins. It's been to auto junk yards. It's been scratched up and scraped. I mean, the thing was disgusting. And so uh, finally this week, I was like, it's time to give this some much needed TLC and a much needed cleaning. Uh, I can barely recognize the thing. I mean, it looks so much better than it used to. And it's still uh, it's still got some, you know, some some uh, little little things here and there. Not the least of which, which is it's missing all the screws from when I opened it when I was in high school. Uh, but it's it doesn't really need the screws. I'm actually not a, not too worried about that because the uh, the plugs hold it in. Uh, so what did I do to this? Well, I used isopropyl alcohol to clean all the the casing and actually did quite a good job. I was kind of amazed at how much that cut through it. Uh, I used I think 90% isopropyl. Uh, now the the side rubber was super stretched and like wouldn't fit on the case anymore uh, because many years ago I decided to peel it off to try to clean it or something. I don't even know what I did. Uh, and so I actually had to cut it down because it was stretched so far out of uh, alignment. I actually had to cut a huge chunk of it off on both sides to get it to uh, match the, the case. Uh, it's kind of amazing how much rubber can stretch. Uh, and then I had the problem of reattaching it, which was actually really, really hard. In fact, this side I still need to reattach a little stronger. Uh, I tried double-sided, some really nice double-sided tape. I tried hot glue. I tried super glue, because the internet had uh, recommended that to me. And then ultimately, uh, the only thing that would work was actually Gorilla Glue. Oh, I tried a, I tried a, uh, another multi-purpose, like stronger industrial adhesive, and that didn't work either. So I ended up, the only thing that would really work was Gorilla Glue, and you can see it kind of popping out the edge here a little bit. It's not the prettiest thing, but it looks like it really is keeping that left side on pretty darn well. I had to use rubber bands around it to hold it in place. Obviously, you can't clamp it. It's a really wide frame, uh, so that was tricky. And um, I had to go in and take off this knob. This knob pops out, and you'll see there's a crack all across the dial and this little piece that chipped off as well. It's really had a rough life. Uh, the reason for that is there's a hex bit that actually turns when you when you turn this dial, you're actually turning a hex bit. And you'll see, you'll see how it actually stretches the crack when I turn it. And that's because the plastic is only around the hex bit, he, the hex bit here, but it, there's not a joining plastic to both sides here. So over time, the uh, the stress on that hex bit turning inside the plastic will just crack the rest of the frame. Uh, eventually, I might pull this all out and epoxy this to get this a really firm, nice uh, fit there. Uh, but it's a pain. It's not going to be very fun to do that. Uh, and it works now. The bigger issue I had was there's actually a plastic nub at the bottom here. And the way this is keyed is there's a, there's a ring, half ring of plastic around. So when you turn it, it hits, it hits a nub that's under this dial. Um, and so when you go all the way to off, bam, it stops at the nub. Well, that nub had worn down over all these years, and so it would go past off. Whew, boy, is that annoying. That was really, really annoying, driving me crazy. So uh, I ended up uh, just putting a dab of hot glue to give it 
more of a, a Z height for that. You have to be really specific though, because if it goes too high, it'll you'll have a hard time turning this. I also applied some lithium grease under the dial to make turning a little easier over the years. I think it actually has grease originally. And ideally, I think for that nub, what I'd like to do eventually is drill a very small screw so that the, the Z height is actually metal and not uh, not hot glue, which I don't expect to last super long. Uh, that would be a much more solid solution. I also used a plastic uh, display cleaner. Uh, I use the, uh, what, what do they call this stuff? The Novus, Novus, uh, to try to clean up this display. You'll see there are some really deep scratches still. Like I said, this has been through hell and back. Uh, real, really had a hard life, poor meter. Can't even see the function, the secondary uh, functions here because they're uh, worn off from years of use. And what else? It's got a resettable fuse for the 10 amp. I actually have the fuse quite a bit lower than the, the rated current it'll do. I never measure 10 amp things. Uh, and so that resettable fuse is nice. You don't have to keep replacing fuses all the time. The 330, the 300 milliamp also has a small fuse inside that's soldered in place. Uh, the replacement fuses for these are stupid expensive, like $10 or something ridiculous. So um, I don't mess around with that. I just soldered in some fuses and, uh, you know, they'll still give you highly accurate ratings. I'm not too worried about whatever degree of measurement it's off or whatever. It's going to be a fraction, really small amount. And uh, what else did I have to do? I had bent out of shape <laughs> the uh, the terminals that these plug into for some reason. Uh, I have no idea why. I'm trying to make a better connection years back. So I had to go in and you'll see it's a real, it's a nice snug fit now, but I had to go in and you'll see it's, it's still a little bit rough around the edge there, but I managed to get it mostly back into a concave shape all the way around and also had to cut down a, um, some of these with isopropyl alcohol. Actually, don't actually I didn't need to cut it down. It actually fits real nice. Push it in there and then you just turn it with the the alcohol to get the jack cleaned. Oh my god, so much black gunk came out of that. Um explains a lot of my measurement problems in the past with this thing, which is why I got the new one. Um but I was, you know, I was ready to scrap this a long time ago. That's why I got the new one and I I kept it around cuz I still had a couple features I liked from it. But I uh, never thought I'd actually put all this TLC to get it uh, this much better and I'm really glad that I did because uh, it's still a really nice meter and it just has a, a really solid build quality obviously some minor manufacturing uh, build issues with the dial but overall uh, it's held up for what 15 years so maybe I'll get another 15 out of it that would be nice and um, yeah it's also nice to have I, I use different leads different probes so I use these larger probes uh, and for the, for the, the new meter. And then for this one, I use these, uh, really fine tipped probes, uh, for the more specific functions that I'm, I'm testing. And, uh, it really does me well having two multimeters and two soldering irons live in the high life. Uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of necessary when you start doing as much stuff that I'm doing. And, uh, yeah. I guess that's it for this video. Um, have fun cleaning your, your fluke meters. Do not peel off the yellow. Don't be dumb like me. And uh, take good care of these guys. They, uh, they're they pricey, but they're also, they're pricey because they last a long time. And um, I'm not going to be like a fluke fanboy. I know they have some questionable business practices protecting their copyright patent stuff. If you, you can look up, there's an article by SparkFun about that. Uh, but... Um, that aside, they make uh, seem to make pretty good, the older stuff especially, really reliable, good multimeters. Just don't throw them in your toolbox, kids. Take good care of the display. Take good care of your meters. That's all for this video. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.